Premier Harry. Yeah. A great star and a great picture. Now here goes a load of unadulterated bull. Was thrilled at the outstanding performance of Gloria Jordan. Her love scenes left nothing to the imagination. Whoa. What charm, what poise, what warmth, unquote. Warmth? Why, she's as cold as Kelsey's... match with your lip movement on the screen, it will ruin my cadenza. Oh, Gloria, be careful of Madame's cadenza. But my public will be looking at me. Your singing off screen is Miss Secondary. Bah, vous êtes un ungrateful oui, child. Oui, 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 oui. Fancy her telling me how to sing. Oh, everything would have been all right if you didn't 
been breathing a cadenza. Forget it. Here, drink your orange juice. I don't want it. I hate it. I hate everything and everybody. Well, that's settled. But don't forget your art theory. The studio calls and they're waiting. Let them wait. That's exactly what they've done for years. One of these days they'll get fed up and throw you out on your... Molly! It's a woman's name, but it ain't Molly. Dare you talk to me like that? Because I'm the only friend you've got. Preposterous. Well, I've loads of friends. Don't kid yourself. If you didn't have this gorgeous home and that cellar full of hooch, not one of these Hollywood chiseling liquor guzzlers would give you a tumble. Take it from me, baby. In this picture racket, you're only good while we're going to it. How dare you talk to me like that? Remember your place. Good. You're almost mad. That's the most animation I've seen in months. Go on. Get good and sore. You shouldn't talk to me like that, Molly. You know when I get angry, I become moody. Mm, I bet your mother was moody before you were born. Yeah? It's the studio again. What'll I tell them? Oh, tell them. We left a half hour ago. I'm moving over, Mr. Clary. I'm tired, too. Go right ahead. Don't mind me, baby. Why aren't you shooting? What's the trouble? Trouble? No trouble. Everything's nice and quiet. Cameras are okay. Nothing wrong with the lights. In fact, we haven't used them today. Well, where's Gloria? Gloria? Oh, yes, that's our leading lady. Well, she's left her house for the studio every half hour since 8 o'clock this morning. It's only noon now, so she certainly ought to be here by 5. I know, but... Uh, isn't there anything you can shoot without her? I'd much rather shoot at her. She can't get away with this. I think I've heard you use that line before. Don't laugh, dear. Am I late, darling? Now, look here, Gloria. This picture must meet a release date, and I can't... Don't laugh, dear. I'm so sorry. I didn't feel well today. In fact, I shouldn't be here at all. Temperamental spasm number 9,647. All right, all right, but, but try not to be late again. You know, Tom is a sore as... Don't you worry about Tom. I can handle him. Boys. I'm sorry I'm late. Okay with us, Miss Jordan. We're working by the hour. Good morning. Morning. Is this? I do so hate to disturb you, but you're sitting in my place. I should use my influence to see that you extra girls have chairs in the future. You stay right where you are. Miss Jordan isn't going to need her chair. You come on up here by the table. We'll try and shoot that love scene. Mr. Crane. Uh, Mr. Crane. Mr. Crane! They're calling me, darling. Just Junior for me and don't have dinner till I get there. I've only got a couple of love scenes to knock over. Do you love me? Mr. Crane! I'm coming. Goodbye, sweetheart. Mr. Crane, come here a minute, will you? Right. 
Now let's take that scene we shot 14 times yesterday. What was wrong with it? It smelled. You don't mind a, a frank criticism, do you? I thought that Mr. Crane was, uh, well, a trifle heavy in that scene. Mr. Crane was excellent in the scene, and you were the only person in the scene with Mr. Crane, and the scene smelled. So figure it out for yourself. Where's my script? You want a script after shooting that scene 50 times yesterday? Certainly not. But I was thinking... Uh, that in that scene where I say I love you... You couldn't have been thinking in that scene where you said I love you, or you'd have said it as if you were talking to a man and not making passes at a chair. It's very unkind of you, Tom. When I made such an effort to get here, I haven't been feeling it all well today. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, now let's take it once. You get ready to make your entrance, Laura. And you get your position, Mr. Crane. Now everybody keep quiet. He's going to quiet. Will you? will you get out of my sight? All right, you come in now, Gloria. Hello, dear. Where have you been? With him, I suppose. Perhaps it'd be better if I were out of the way. I'll give you a divorce. But I tell you, he means nothing to me. Can't you understand, Charles, dear? I, 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 uh, just... What comes next? I love you. Thanks, buddy. I love you. Gloria. You go to your dressing room, will you? I'll see you in a minute. Fix your makeup, please, Mr. Crane. Now, everybody get ready. I'm going to shoot this scene. Get the camera. Now, Gloria, didn't you ever love anyone? I'm fond of you. Yeah, you like dogs and cats, I know. Now, listen to me. You're supposed to love this man. He's your husband. And he's discovered something you've been trying to conceal from him, and he's hurt. And you don't want him to be hurt, because you love him. You're trying to convince him that you love him. You want him to believe that more than anything else in the world. So every move... Every gesture is one of passionate tenderness because you don't want him to be hurt. Now, won't you try and get that for me? I'll try. And thanks so much for being so patient with me. Tarzan. Who? It's Roger, your big game hunter. He wants you to dine with him. I told him you'd probably jump at the chance. Oh, you didn't. Oh, I did, too. Hello, Roger. All right, put a party on. I'm going to take it. Miss Jordan was called to the phone. She'll be right back. She was what? She was called to the phone. My dear, I've been almost there all day. What's your telephone number? Why? Damn it. Six, four, five, seven. Are you doing anything tonight? No. That's too bad. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Naughty, naughty. quarters for fighters. Oh, oh, let's go down. All right. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, 
how's Flynn coming along? Oh, great. Say, there's the next middleweight champion of the world, or I don't know a fighter when I see one. This kid's got everything. Class, speed, endurance. And he's got a haymaker, say, it's a sweetheart. And a clean living kid, too, if you know what I mean. Ah, you're right, Pete. Women have knocked out more fighters than blows on the chin head. Yes, but that'll never happen to Flynn. No? No, this kid's got brains. He's got ambition. Like his look? He's going places. You know, the next fight's for the title of the world. Have you seen enough? Yes. All right, let's go. <laughs> if she can hook him. I thought she wouldn't stop short of a title. Say, that guy's so important he doesn't need a title. He's a real old American cat. Family came over in a rowboat before the Mayflower. Funny thing, ain't it, Tom? How we can love the ones we sometimes hate. Yeah. Well, here's to her. May her hips never get as broad as her A's. How was your golf today? You know that fourth hole? Uh-huh. I hit the prettiest ball right over the green. But the wind was against you. Well, how did you know? I for stare, Charlie. Uh -huh. Hello, Tom, dear. Business or pleasure? Habit. Oh, we had the most glorious ride. The park is perfectly gorgeous this time of year. Oh, hello, Tom, dear. I had the most divine ride on the donkey. And tell me, my pet, don't you remember good old Edith Johnson you discovered on 10th Avenue? You remember her. She worked next to me at the home laundry. Come on, relax. Get off that horse's neck. You're on the wrong end. I think that's beastly of you. Perfectly beastly. I'm going to get drunk. What? Well, why not? Nobody understands me. I work so hard and try so hard. And when I act like a lady, you razz me. When I say I'm going to get drunk, you're shocked. Oh, why shouldn't I drink? No, I mustn't. I must drink orange juice to stay thin. I mustn't play. I must sleep so I can work. I mustn't smile because it leaves wrinkles. I mustn't cry because it ruins my eyes. I mustn't... That's enough mustn't for one day, darling. Here, drink this if you want it. <coughs> oh, I'm so unhappy. Well, why don't you marry me and make yourself permanently unhappy? I don't think that's funny. Neither do I. Why don't you lie down and rest? That's all I ever do. Well, then don't lie down. Well, then I'll be tired. Well, then lie down. No, I won't lie down. <coughs> I'll have another drink. a girl. Another drink for the lady, Oscar. Hey, you are. Oh, you're so sweet. So, darling, if you keep on like that, I'll find myself liking you again. But I thought you loved me. I do, but it's a long time since I've liked you. What's a funny thing to say? How's your friend Pentley? He's leaving for New York tomorrow. Is that why you're crying? Of course not. Is he coming back? Certainly. Congratulations. Do you have to be sarcastic? Sarcastic? What do you want, condolences? I want you to take me in your arms and promise that you'll never leave me. Oh, come in. When are you going to marry him? Oh, he hasn't asked me. And if he does? Of course I will. And in the meantime, you want me to hold you in my arms and promise never to leave you? Never. I wouldn't know what to do without you. Of all the selfish little... Oh. Do you like this? Yes. Anything else you like? You. Oh, that's enough of that. Tom, were you ever in love? Ha! Huh. Don't laugh. All right, I won't laugh. But if Pentley's got you doing nip-ups, don't expect me to get interested. Pentley? Who said anything about Pentley? Who said? Oh, we haven't talked about anybody else since you came into the room. Well, I wasn't thinking of him. All right, I give up. Who were you thinking of? No one in particular. I was just asking. Mm. Um, Tom, do you know any prize fighters? Prize fighters? Yes. A 
few. Why? No reason in particular. I just thought it might be amusing to no one. Amusing to you or the prize fighter? Well, don't be nasty. I merely thought that since I've never met one, that their lives and their point of view might be interesting. All right, all right. Who is he? I saw several today. Uh, there was one named Flynn. Is he good looking? I didn't notice. I only thought... You just thought it'd be interesting to meet a prize fighter. Well, why pick on Flynn? Why not Conera? You have to go out of your way to be disagreeable. I'm not being disagreeable. I'm merely being accommodating. You wanted to meet a fighter, so I picked the biggest one in the world. I hate you. Good. I hope I never see you again. Marvelous. I'll never do another picture for you. Now, that is good news. What do you mean by that? Merely that I've spent the better part of my life trying to disguise the fact that you're a rotten actress. And if I can get Mallon to give me Janet Gray, I'll make a picture I'll be proud of. You make a picture with her, and I'll kill you. Do you hear me? I'll kill you. Hey, that's pretty oh. good. Why don't you do it that way in front of a camera? You might find it amusing. Oh, it's too noisy. You want to go? Yes. All right. Hiya, Joe. Hi, Harry. Hello, Joe. Still want to go? No. <laughs> Is that why you brought me here? Tom. Bring him over. Please, Tom. If your taste has turned to fighters, I'll go into training myself. I hate you, despise you, and I always will. Oh, <laughs> Miss Jordan, will you autograph my menu for me? Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Miss Jordan. You're entirely welcome. You accuse me of being selfish, and then when I want to be myself, you won't help me. All right, all right. Hey, Pete, let's go somewhere else. You're going home in a minute. You know, you've got road work to do in the morning. I forgot about that. Well, how are you, Pete? Oh, hello, Tom. What are you doing, slumming? Uh, oh, uh, meet Joe Flynn, the next middleweight champion of the world. How do you do, Mr. Flynn? This is Tom Cleary, a big shot in the movies. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Cleary. Won't you sit down? Oh, sorry, I can't. I've got Gloria Jordan with me. Gloria Jordan? The movie star? Yes. Would you like to meet her? Would I? Well, come on. Thanks for asking me, too. Miss Jordan, Mr. Flint. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Did you sit down, Joe? Oh. Have some beer? Oh, no, thanks. I don't drink. That is my manager. He won't allow me to. Oh, do fighters have directors, too? I saw you training the other day. I saw you on a horse. Uh, I mean, I saw you on a horse. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I seen your last picture, too. I... I see all your pictures. You're my favorite star. <laughs> what was that last picture I seen you in? Uh, remember uh, something about Fallen, uh, the Fallen... Uh, oh, the Fallen Angel. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Did you see it? Oh, yes. Yeah. You sure was great in that. <laughs> I like that scene with you and uh, the guy with a soup and fish on in your bedroom. He tried to kiss you. <laughs> you couldn't get away from him. <laughs> you know, I... Uh, I had an idea how to get that I think guy. I Jordan played that love scene very, very well. Oh, sure you did. Oh, yeah. But that fella that wanted to marry you, he sure was slow. Sure. He, he wanted it all right, but uh, I guess he just didn't have the nerve there. That's the way my director wanted it played. Ah, uh, those directors. They don't know really how things happen, do they? Am I right? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. 
Now, that would have been me. I'd have had Mug walk over to you and say, hey, listen, we've been running around together for six years. I waited long enough. You and me's going to get hitched up or else. Now, that'd be a very charming love scene with such sophisticated dialogue. And I love it. Sure, everybody goes for that. You know, people, they, they like the down-to-earth stuff. Now, you take me. Oh, gee, I've seen your pictures in a million magazines, but the one I cut out was the one with you in poor clothes. He was standing alongside a mug with a megaphone in his hand beside the camera. Have you still got that picture? Oh, sure, I got the picture of you, but the mug with a megaphone, I cut him out. Oh, you cut the mug with the megaphone out. Yeah, I didn't like him. Hi, Joe. Hello, Joe. Well, Miss Jordan, I think we ought to be going. Oh, I have a very important story conference at the studio. Will you take Miss Jordan home? Sure, sure. Why, of course, I, uh, my car don't amount to very much. Oh, I don't mind, if you'll take me. Would I? Oh, sure I would. Thank you. I'll just tell my manager, will you excuse me a minute? Certainly. Wait up. Yes, sir. How much? Uh, dollar fifty. Thank you, sir. I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm, I'm going to take her home. home. Yeah, I'll see you later. All right, I can go. Gee, what a layout. What, another room? Do you mind if I look around? No, make yourself at home. Hey. Oh, gee, this is nice. Gee, you're way on top, ain't you? Aren't those rolling clouds beautiful? Yeah, and they're going places. Going places? Sure. That's what I'm going to do. Feel. That's okay for now. But after I get to be the champ, I'm going to start the old head working. I'm not going to be a mug all my life. No, sir. I'm going places. Yeah, I know. I'm just a fighter. Now, you take Gene Tunney. He had the right idea. He got the dough and quit. Read a lot of books, traveled, improved his mind, and really made something of himself. You know, just being a champ, it doesn't amount to very much. You knock a guy out, everybody gives you the glad hand, you sign a couple of toothpaste ads, then some guy comes along and knocks you out. Then what are you? An ex. Have you ever been knocked out? Well, uh, once. Oh, that was when I was a punk. Did it hurt? Ah. Oh, the birds did sing for a few minutes. <laughs> Tell me about it. Well, you see, it was my second bout. The other fighter's name was One Round Logan. I was doing great until the fourth round. All of a sudden, my chin connected with his fist. The skies opened up, the angels was falling. Of course, I couldn't hear him. <laughs> and... <laughs> I've married every leading man in motion pictures. Yeah, but look, you don't really care for all those guys you kiss in the movies, do you? Well, why do you ask? No, oh, I don't know. It must be kind of tough on you kissing a lot of guys you don't even like. Of course, it would be different if... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I guess I must have forgotten myself. You're a diamond in the rough. What are you sore about? Oh, I got a right to be sore. Ever since you picked up with this actorine, you're training like a sissy. Gee, hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, nothing. Only I have to stand by and watch your dame ruin you. That's all. Listen, Joe, 
Unless we leave for Arrowhead tonight, I'm through with you. Tonight? Yes, tonight. And while we're at it, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. You've known this girl three weeks. How do you spend your time? Uh, what do you mean? Well, just what do you do when you're together? Have you met any of her swell friends? Does she take you to any of these swank clubs where the movie crowd hang out? Pete, that's just what I'm trying to tell you. She doesn't go in for that kind of stuff. She don't, eh? No, oh, she'd rather be alone with me. You know, some quiet spot like uh, near the beach. Near the beach. That's because she don't want to be seen with you. Hey, Pete. You think I got a chance to win a championship? Think. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Yeah, why? Because you got a punch in that right hand that's like a ton of brick. Yeah? Well, if you don't want to feel yourself on the other end of it, no wise cracks about her. That's plain enough, ain't it? Hey, Pete. You want to leave tonight? Yeah. Pack. Oak. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Gloria? I don't know. I just went all to pieces. Miss Jordan is on the verge of a breakdown. But I can't rest. I told him. We must finish the picture. We just have to. I've advised a trip. In fact, if she doesn't go away, she may have a complete breakdown. I want to talk to Gloria. Alone, please. It was a rotten act, kid. I don't know what you mean. The gag. What's it all about? What? You want to go away. Why? Joe's going. Help me get away. I won't be able to stand it if he goes. Say, are you on the level with this kid? I love him. All right, only I'd have liked you better if you hadn't pulled that stunt. I'll finish your part in the picture in the next two days. You're not angry? What about? Because I love Joe. I hope it works out swell. Joe. The right hand now, that's it. Keep circling around, Joe. The left hand now. Left hand. I'm telling you, boys, Joe Flynn's the next middleweight champ of the world. He ain't just a slugger. He's got a noodle. And he uses it, too. And by the way, he's got ambition. Is Joe a hard kid to handle? Hard? No. He's just like a baby. He does everything I tell him. He's up at 5 o'clock and on the road. And at 8 o'clock, he's in his bed. I'm telling you, boys, it's in the bag. And you can go tell your bosses to get the headline newspapers ready. And here's how it's going to read. Oh. Joe Flynn, new middleweight champion. Look at him, don't he look sweet? Punch a little harder, Joe. Hey, look there, right? Here. Just a craving to see you, dear. Oh. <laughs> it's good to see you. Come on in. Well, where's my guiding star? Out training. Training? Training for what? Oh, let's skip it. Hmm? How'd you do? Take long get up there? A Joe. A Joe.
Excuse me. Is this Jordan woman? No, she's not. Well, uh, I'd like to talk to the dame that lives with her. I'm the dame? What's bothering you? Joe Flynn. He's not bothering me. He's just driving me nuts. He and this dame that you were living with. Did you say dame? Yes, I said dame. I don't care if she's Gloria Jordan or Sarah Bernhardt. She's nothing but a dame to me. And she's ruining my boy. Hello, Pete. Oh, hello. I'm glad you're here. What's wrong, Pete? Everything. Say, listen, you know when a fighter's training, he's supposed to be training these. Well, he's not supposed to see dames. You know what I mean, don't you? I know what you're talking about. And believe me, brother, I feel sorry for you. Because you and ten men couldn't talk that dame out of what she wants. You mean not even if you explained it to her? She knows the facts of life. Yeah, I know, but I think if she liked them, she'd leave them alone, don't you? If the average woman cared, she would. Gloria Jordan does exactly as she pleases, and she doesn't care who gets hurt. Oh, I see. Well, what am I supposed to do? Stick around and suffer. You've got company. Tom! Oh, what a surprise! How are you, darling? Oh, fine. Hmm? Uh, you know Joe. Well, of course. How are you, Joe? Fine. How are you? This is Pete Miller, my manager. I'm glad to know you. Joe talks about you all the time. Thanks. Well, I'll be going. Won't you stay for a drink? No, and he can't drink. Of course not. Only milk. I'm very careful of Joe's diet. It's much better now since she stopped cooking for him. Don't listen to her. Joe tells me that if he wins this fight, it'll be because of you. I'm doing my best. You know, miss, there's certain things a fighter ought not be doing. Like staying up late. It's getting late now. Come on, let's shove off. Good night, Mr. Miller. Take good care of him. And come over often. I'd love to have you. Good night, Tom. Good night. Tomorrow night. Good night. The hypocrite, he hates me. Hypocrite? He tries to keep Joe from seeing me. Hm. Sweet chance he has. Gloria, my dear, did it ever occur to you that that hypocrite might have excellent reasons for keeping Flynn away? Certainly. He's jealous. Oh, come here. Oh, it's good to see you. I feel as though I've been gone a long time. You have, and that's why I'm here. By the way, did you read that manuscript you brought up here with you? Of course. What do you think of it? can be improved. Great war scenes, though, don't you think? Oh, yes. They're marvelous. Yeah. Um, aren't there any war scenes in it? No, my dear. <laughs> I'll read it tonight, honestly. I'm so in love. Why waste time reading scripts when life is so grand? Nevertheless, you must read it. I'll start now. I wonder where it is. It's under the kitchen stove. The dog was playing with it. Examiner, time, cigarettes, anything <laughs> else? Did you see Joe? He'll be over later. Yeah. Say, could old Uncle Tom speak seriously for a moment? You don't drag out your bloodhound. What is it, a lecture? I talked to some reporters over at the hotel. Oh, about me? Do they know I'm here? They don't even know you're alive. Fancy that. Shut up. This is serious. They tell me that Joe's slipping. What do you mean by that? Well, he started training like a house of fire. Now he's slowed down to a walk. The betting odds against him are going up. Against him? Uh -huh. Why, the idea. Then I'll bet for him. Mm. How much are they betting? <laughs> Gracie Allen's little missing sister or I lose my bet. Tell me, darling, do you have a little blue hat? If she has, I want her to pack it and get back to town. Why? So Flynn will have a chance to do some serious training. Then he may have a chance of winning that championship. Well, I won't do it. I'm not hurting him, I'm encouraging him. I tell him he's going to win. It builds up his morale. And besides, I'm getting tired of people criticizing everything that I do. I work so hard and I try so hard. And nobody understands you and we just hope you're not going to cry. I'm not. 
Going to read the paper. She can read. No, she can't. She's looking at the pictures. Funny, isn't it? After living a life of luxury for years, I still automatically pick up the want ad section. I've been thinking things over. And perhaps you're right. I'll go back. That's fine. What's come over you? Well, I wouldn't hurt Joe for anything in the world. And if I thought my staying here hurt him, why, I'll leave. I'll leave today. Tom, would you please go over and say goodbye to him for me? I wouldn't know how. All right. She can be regular when she wants to be. That's the only reason I hang around. Just when I'm ready to wring her neck, she does something decent, and I'm all gaga again. you doing? Packing. I'm clearing out. I wouldn't spend another day in your house for all the tea in China. But why? Because you're a liar and a cheat. I didn't see that picture in the paper until just now. Do you think that's the reason I decided to go back? Don't make me slap you again. Here's the box I wanted you to have. It's all perfumed inside. I don't want it. it. Smells like you. Oh, please take it. I don't want it. What are you going to do? I'll do all right. Don't forget you have a benefits play on the 29th. All right. Anything else? Got a couple of... Fur coats at best lengths being remodeled. Well, you can have them. I don't want them. What are you doing? Just smoothing, smoothing things. You know, you always were bad at packing. Remember the time that we were kicked out of that apartment because we couldn't pay our rent? Which apartment? We went on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> You were so mad when you packed, you left a trail of my underwear clear from Highland Divine. That was funny, wasn't it? I don't think so. We only had eight dollars between us. I bought a hat. You didn't buy a hat. You made a down payment on the thirty-dollar one. But it got me a job. Remember, I felt so swell in it that I just wouldn't take no for an answer. We've had lots of fun together, haven't we? I don't think so. 
Oh, why can't you be a regular guy? You used to be. I will if you won't leave me. I love you better than anyone in the world. I, I know I don't tell the truth all the time. But this is one time that you're wrong. I didn't see those pictures. Don't you believe me? No, but what the heck can I do? <laughs> Great work, Joe. Keep it up and you'll be our next champ. Thanks. How's Gloria? Fine. Joe, Gloria's convinced us that fighters and dames don't mix. Ah, uh, she's swell. Mm. She's only thinking of me. Sure, you know how much this championship means to her. Ah, uh, we don't talk about nothing else. There ain't nothing gonna stop me. She... she just couldn't bring herself to say... goodbye. Huh? Goodbye? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you've got a lot of training to do, and the big fight's only two weeks away, you know? Yeah, she's right. I'm going to put everything I got into it, too. Gee, it's great to fight for somebody. You know, this fight ain't just for the championship. Thanks. And I'll never forget you for introducing us. Say, you're going to be the ringside, ain't you? I've got seats for you. Thanks, Joe. And you've got to win this fight, kid. I'll be pulling for you. Oh, gee, thanks. Remember, you throw her out when you get your cue, and not before. Be careful of that, will you? Yes. And when I give the cue for lightning, I want lightning and not rain. I'm getting sick of this, I don't mind telling you. Better take another shot. All right. Hey, Chief. What? It's Jordan's voice is shot. She's very tired. Yeah? Says she's soaked to the skin. Well, that's just too bad about her. I'm soaked. We're all soaked. What does she expect on an exterior set? Steam heat? What does Simon agree you turned out to be? I'm all in, I tell you. Now, Gloria, be a good girl, will you? Do you suppose this is any picnic for me or the boys? Now, let me tell you something. When the public sees this picture, they're not interested in how tough it was to make. All they're interested in is entertainment. Why don't you pull that big punchline? The show must go on. That's always surefire. Oh, come on now, Gloria. Be a good girl and snap into this now, will you? Come on now. Then you can all go home. And remember, now, this is a musical, and you're singing a torch song, so snap into it, will you? Come on, now, do this for me like a good girl. Now, get in there, come on. All right, now, you're all set. Now, be ready with your lightning now. Give him a whistle. All right, get your numbers. Your camera's all set. Rain 92, take 50. Okay, come on up. Give me the rain. Get out and stay out. Uh, Miss Jordan, Miss Evans is on the phone in Mr. Mullins' office. She said it's very important. I'll be right back. 
Hello? Molly? What? What about Roger? Better think up a good one, dear. Roger's here giving a gentlemanly impersonation of a sore owl. He's heard all about your vacation. Wait a minute. You don't know the half of it. Joe got into town and he's coming over. What? Joe? Oh, he and Roger mustn't meet. What'll I do? A phone Joe. Tell him I'm working tonight and I'll call him after I finish. I'll see you later. How are you? I'm unhappy. Liars generally are. I often wonder why they bother. You're going to marry Pentley? I don't know. Yes. Well, that's a typical Jordan remark. I don't know yes. What are you going to do about Joe? Set him up in housekeeping? Of course not. I'm going to tell him the truth. I was wrong to love him. I never could be happy with him. Naturally not. Your cheap little soul craves other things. There's a name for what you're doing, you know. Oh, I'm not going to insult you. I've known girls of that kind I liked. Only what I liked in them I find lacking in you. What do you mean? Honesty. I don't know what you're talking about. No? All right, then I'll tell you. You don't need to. Why don't you leave me alone? I'm going to. I don't know why I've hung around here this long. Unless it was to catch a glimpse now and then of someone I used to know. <laughs> you're jealous. You preach to me and pretend to be so good. But all it is is jealousy. That's the most intelligent remark I've heard from you in a long time. Only it's not entirely correct. You know, Gloria, ten years ago, I used to know a girl named Edith Johnson. If anybody had hurt her, I'd have killed them. And that would have been the end of everything. But life plays some very peculiar pranks. It had me stand by and watch her die by inches. Some of her honesty gone here, some of her freshness there. Until you aren't even beautiful to me anymore. Do you hear that? You're drunk. That's right. I'm drunk with relief. I'm seeing you as you really are, as cheap and tawdry as the things you worship. Edith Johnson is dead. And I've been going around worshipping a doggone corpse. Let's write Edith's epitaph. Here lies Edith Johnson, a nice kid while she lasted, but she didn't last long. Dead of Hollywooditis, press agent cirrhosis, a victim to the altar of the great god Fourflush. May she lie in peace as consistently as her counterpart lies and lies and lies. And that's a darn good epitaph. You're drunk. You're crazy drunk. Tom, what's the matter with me marrying a man who can give me wealth and security? A man who I'd be proud of. Well, if he's such a swell guy, why not give him a break? What do you mean? Let him marry someone that he'll be proud of. By the way, you're going to tell him about Joe? Oh, of course not. And only in your last picture you spent three reels trying to prove to the audience that a woman should tell. Oh, you'll never learn. I'm going to tell Joe. I'm going to tell him tonight. I'm going to be honest with him. Of course, it's not going to be easy. Well, now what's the matter? You say you're going to tell him tonight? Yes. What's the matter with that? Nothing, not a thing. You're amazing, that's all. Say, don't you ever think of anyone but yourself? You went out of your way to meet that boy. You told him that you loved him and you got him to believing it. And now that you've had your fun, you've decided to grab off the big prize. But not content with that, you're going to be honest with him and tell him the night before his big fight so that you can break his heart. You... Oh, what's the use? Uh, then you think I shouldn't tell him tonight? 
If you do, I'll invite the press and give myself the long-delayed pleasure of wringing that beautiful white neck of yours. Now get out of my office. Get out! Did you get Joe? No. What'll I tell him? Oh, anything. Tell him it was a publicity stunt. Hello, Roger, dear. Hello, Don. Oh, I'm dreadfully tired. Mind pouring me a drink? Certainly. Thanks, old dear. Aren't you drinking? No, thanks. I've had quite a few today. Who is? Not a woman. No, with an old classmate of mine who's just returned from Arrowhead. Arrowhead? I spent my vacation there. Yes. But you didn't tell me you spent it with a prize fighter. But Roger, dear. Darling, you don't understand. Evening. Is Jordan home? Yes, she's in the sir. Thanks. It was a, a publicity stunt. That's what it was. You don't really think this common little prize fighter means anything to me. True, I went out of my way to meet him and encourage him. Just a publicity stunt. If he wins the championship, I'll jump into the ring, throw my arms around him, the cameras will click, and the next day my picture will be front page news. Don't you see, darling? They feel all right, champ? You see, kid, I'm beginning to call you the champ already. <laughs> we'll win. Ah, oh, come on, relax. Remember, we're going places. Oh, forget her. How can I forget her when you keep talking about her all the time? Okay, Pete. Main event. We're ready. Sure looks good. He's a great specimen of manhood. Now they're circling the ring now, making it easy, sort of feeling each other out. Ferrer leads with a hard right, but Flynn blocks it. Flynn comes back with a body punch, and Ferrer blocks and answers with the left. Oh boy! Flynn shot a hard one to Ferrer's jaw, and how it connected. He follows with the left, and another one. The champ just sent a hard one into Flynn's ribs. Well, kid, you're doing great. I told you he was only a flash. Listen, look out for his right hand. 
and make him come to you. She might at least have been here. You see him on the right cross the Flynn's jaw and how he connected. He follows with a left to Flynn's heart, then a right, and Flynn up against the rope. And the crowd is going wild as the bell rings for the end of the round. Oh, boy, what a fight. Oh, you radio listeners, it's too bad you're not here. You're missing the fight of the year. Come on, Roger. Let's go. We've loads of time. You don't have to get to that stuffy place until the last round. Here, have a drink. No, thanks. Shorten up on your punches, dear. You try and paint him into a right hand, Joe. Take it easy, champ. You've got him. He's a cinch. That guy's plenty tough. Try one on him. Plenty of time, Joe. Connected it would have been curtain for Flynn. Boy, what a fight. He comes back with another. It lands and it rocks Flynn and his knees are caving in. Oh, Flynn's taking a lot of punishment in there. It looked like he was coming along, but the champ's experience is telling his story. And they go into a clinch as the bell ends the round. Come on, Roger, we must go. It's too exciting to miss. Oh, all right. Bell just saved him that time. He's a good kid, but I'm afraid the chance too much for him. You're doing great, Joe. Keep using your right hand. Give him all you got. It only takes one to put him away. Remember, Joe, we're going places. Say, I'll lay the odd side of one the champ wins. Take hard, ain't you? There's only chances by a knockout. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll see. Joe, it was great. You got him going. Listen, Joe, keep on using your right hand now. What a comeback Flynn made in that last round. He floored the champ for a count of six with a terrific right cross to the chin.
Isn't that wonderful? Yes, that's a marvelous fight. Common fighter. Just a publicity stunt. Don't you see, Roger, dear? I'll jump into the ring. Cameras will click. Front page news. Lynn had the fight since. Then something happened. He dropped his guard. The champ showered him with right and left to the heart. At no time did Flynn make any attempt to protect himself. Then the champ landed a haymaker, and Flynn went down. Ah, come on, kid. Don't worry. As long as you're not hurt. That's all I care about. Why, we'll get a return match with Ferrer, and you'll put him away in no time. Look at me. Look at me, kid. Now, am I sore? Am I? I didn't come through for you, Pete. And all on the kind of a day. Everything's going to be all okay. Don't worry. How oh, are you, dear? Are you all right? I'm okay. Too bad things didn't turn out as we planned. And we was going places. That's all right, dear. I'm so happy that you're not hurt. How about your publicity? My publicity? Sure. Your picture's in the paper hugging a new champ. You was going to be so proud because I won the championship for you. There's a laugh. A common prize fighter in love with the famous Gloria Jordan. A cheater would sell herself for a newspaper story. Well, I stopped you. I cheated you out of it. I had that guy whip it. I let him take me. Now, where are your headlines? Everything you say is true. I was greedy, selfish, worshipping the great god Fourflush. But you're wrong. You didn't cheat me out of my publicity. Because tomorrow, every paper will carry the headline. Gloria Jordan. Mary's joke to him. That kid took an awful licking for her. He's not the only one. <laughs> 